placement in pickleball is so important. Purposeful placement is the difference between lower and higher level players. So pickleball lovers, I suggest we learn right now. Pickleball lovers, don't forget to have a good day. This point is a great illustration of what you should do if your opponents are approaching the kitchen. Hit at your opponent's feet, right? That's what they're doing. And I know it, I know it, I know what they're doing, but you can't stop it. It's a good technique. Also, I have such a good drill you could do in the park with the front to get better at hitting at your opponent's feet and resetting because your opponents are doing it to you. Check in the description, save 10% on any paddle, and let's get started right now. Here's the drill. One person is at the kitchen like this, feet and balls down at your partner's feet. Let me show you exactly where the partner should be. So the kitchen line's here, the baseline's here. They should be in the middle of the court, working on the recess, hidden low. The other person's feeding, right? Let me demonstrate right now. Do you mind if one of you guys help me out for like one second? Do you care if you're on YouTube? Like, okay, cool, cool. Are you good at resets? Not as much, no. Let, yeah. Let's try a drill yeah. right now. When we're approaching the net, how hard is it to hit that ball at our feet? So why don't we hit that to our opponents all the time? We try to hit it away from our opponents. Don't we know a pickleball court is pretty small after all? Furthermore, if we go for that line, what might we do? We might hit the ball out, and with two people on the pickleball court, it's really easy to defend, so why don't we just hit it at our opponent's feet more? And that's why it's so important to target our opponent's feet. It really is, I'm not lying. At the higher levels, how many slams do you see? A ton, right? They can get the ball back, and you have to place the ball at their feet or angle it out wide, but let's place the ball at their feet because we can win the point because that's a most tough shot to defend. The main problem I have with a lot of my students I coach is they approach the kitchen too fast because your opponents are gonna hit at your feet anyway, right? So you're running and they hit at your feet and you're out of balance. So I would suggest we move more dynamically to the kitchen because our opponents, our good opponents, are gonna hit at our feet and we need to be ready to reset. So Noah, here's the drill. You just served, you hit your third shot drop, you're approaching the kitchen and you're working on your reset, so let's see it. I'm hitting low shots right at your feet. We want your paddle low, body low, Really work on resetting these balls in the kitchen. Try to take this ball out of the air if possible. Better, better, and it's a low line drive. It works. For amateurs, it works. The pros might hit a little higher, but that's beautiful. Try to get it in the kitchen area. He's a little awkward because he's not used to doing this drill, but you pretty much hit the shot all the time if you're a good pickleball player. A lot better, beautiful, softer wrist that time. I love it, I love it. Better, that time you let it bounce, probably take it out of the air. But if you're doing this at home, three minutes with your partner, switch it up, you go back, and then after that, you can really try to play out the point, get to the kitchen, and really keep working on those resets. Look, even in the dinkin battle, we gotta place the ball at that feet, at that inner foot to get the pop-up to draw the error. There's other things we can do, we all know that, but for the purpose of this segment, let's focus on the feet. And we see really long dinkin battles, like at the 4-0, 4-5 level, and they're not really hitting offensive dinks at the opponent's inner foot to get pop-ups, right? Because targeting that feet is so important. My point is, if we're not playing offensively, we're not playing at all. We're not getting better, at least. Left foot to left foot, go ahead. Okay, there we go. Okay, so nice and easy. I'm trying to find Kyle's backhand, he's trying to find mine. Tyson McGuffin. Everyone knows him, everyone loves him. He developed this drill to target the inner foot. What's the inner foot? The foot that that put in weight on. Normally middle, but doesn't have to be. Usually the person's backhand. Like always, the person's backhand. Depends if they're left-handed. That's what the inner foot is. It's highlighted, you can see it right there. And what's wrong with these really long dinkin' battles? Well, I would say they're not being offensive. 
Dinkin is a shot used to set up an offensive weapon, and if we're not using it offensively, we're not getting better at pickleball, I'm sad to say. And many players don't mess around. They just go straight at that inner foot in a Dinkin battle because it works, right? Keep in mind that going after the opponent's inner foot is an offensive technique, right? So we need a dead dink to hit it off. What's a dead dink? A dink that sits up with not a lot of spin and it's high. JW and Dylan Frazier, far court, watch them target the inner foot, the cell point. Drop to the inner foot, dink to the inner foot on the opponent's right. Forehand is taking it and he's left handed. They dink to the inner foot on the left handed person. I'll put this in slow motion. I know it's complicated. JW hits a third shot, drop to the inner foot of his opponent and it makes it very tough for them to attack. Next, dink. Inner foot, right? But left-handed opponent and forehand middle takes it? Makes sense, right? Again, left foot. Inner foot of the person on the right-handed side, but left-handed forehand took it. This is the inner foot on the left-handed player. And all this work to get the dead dink so we could speed it up, which is the point of pickleball, right? It's coming. I know it is. try to get a little farther out. See how you're here? I would try to have ready position a little farther out, right? Because for me, I can go either way. Try it. Better, better, better. Good, good. Beautiful. Perfect, perfect. Awesome, 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 awesome. Beautiful. And, and lots of times they'll be coming out of that inner foot here, so it's gonna be a little tougher. Better, better. And he chooses to take that forehand, which you can do, right? That's a good pickleball technique. If you're bad at backhand, <laughs> keep, keep targeting that inner foot. When people are approaching the kitchen, you really want to target this inner foot. People don't do it enough because that's a tough shot. Thank you so much. Just met him. He probably thinks I'm weird, but who doesn't? <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, of course. Save my day. So just like thinking, and when we're approaching the kitchen, we want to go at our opponent's inner foot because we're in an offensive position, right? If we're not, it's going to be tough to go with that inner foot, and it's not a high percentage play, and we're not going to do good in tournaments, and people are going to leave us in life. One more thing, when we target that inner foot, what are we expecting? A pop-up, right? So many times my clients are playing in tournaments, and they attack that inner foot, get a pop-up, and they don't attack it because they actually got what they wanted in life and they didn't take it. Pickleball lovers take a look at that video, it was really good, but let me ask you a question. Do you target your opponent's inner foot? What are some techniques you use? And please leave your comments, please subscribe, and don't forget to have a good day.